Hello to you all on this most auspicious and blessed day. On this day, indeed, we get, finally, some more Imperator Rome news. And that news is great. That news is that Menander, finally, is going to be released. And it has been a very, very long time coming, indeed. So... And just before we get into the actual dev diary itself, uh, I just want to uh, go over uh, some things uh, that uh, that we've got um, from the Twitter account of uh, Imperator Rome. Uh, so, first off, let me just open up Twitter. Yeah, right. So, uh, on the 6th of August, we got this uh, little enigma, this little uh, doodly bopper thing here. Solve the enigma citizens in pick. Tura Veritas, and don't forget, human behavior flows from three main sources, desire, emotion, and knowledge. Uh, we've got a picture of Caesar, uh, we've got, um, you know, cipher symbols, and then we've got these random-ass letters. I decided to be very um, uh, playful with it, and I did a, 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 it's not an anagram, is it an anagram? I think it's an anagram. Is it actually, did I do it on here? Plato has questioned Demetrius's qualifications, general? How undeserved. Uh, I just thought I'd have a bit of fun with it, but yeah. Uh, what it is is actually a uh, Caesar cipher where you, you know, move the letters, uh, in this case, three spaces. Uh, so this changes into, you know, P turns into an M, uh, H turns into uh, an E, etc., etc. This is Menander. We already know that the dev, uh, not dev, sorry, the next update is going to be called the Menander patch. Uh, then we have this one here. Um, again, Caesar cipher. Uh, again, they're showing the try, so three. Caesar Cipher moving back three places turns this into releases. And then finally, we have this one, which I haven't actually worked out. Um, we could do it together, or I could just pause the video and do it on my own. And as I am so good at this, I decrypted it without even using a site called uh, decode.com, uh, which basically this means tomorrow, August 11th. Uh, again, Imperator using filthy date systems just never, never sits right with me. Uh, but anyway, we now have this interesting piece of artwork as well, which is a obviously a new loading screen of some description, um, which is, it's interesting. They're all wearing masks and such. It's, uh, it's a bit of a different style than we're used to, but Menander update releases tomorrow. Yes, indeed. The 11th of August, we're going to get the Menander update. And, uh, of course, I will be playing it quite a bit, hopefully. Uh, but let us go into the dev diary itself, because there is a bit more news that we can glean. Uh, because we also have the uh, changelog, which is awesome. So first off, let's, uh, let's read the announcement itself. Greetings all. As promised, today marks the return of developer diaries for Imperator Rome. Today's a little special as we're also announcing the release of the 1.5 Menander update, as well as the augmented re-release of the Epirus content pack. The Epirus pack was previously released as a pre-order bonus, but many of you have been asking for a way to acquire the content. As such, we decided to augment the pack with a new set of missions and a Bloodline trait, which will be automatically applied for all owners of the pre-order DLC, the Bloodline being the one of the Aegidae. Um, sorry, Aikidae. Um, Pyrrhus's bloodline, and it will be automatically applied for all owners of the pre-order DLC. What you've all been waiting for, however, is the collected patch notes for 1.5, which alongside the suite of new features we covered in previous dev diaries, includes a larger than usual collection of bug fixes, adjustments, and minor content. So expansion features, we'll go through this first. Uh, this is, I imagine, what we'll be getting if we get the Epirus content pack. A uh, new set of missions for Epirus. Pyrrhus now possesses a bloodline trait for owners of the Epirus pack. Any added content will be added retrospectively for those who pre-order the game. Epirus pack is made available for purchase as well, which is nice. Uh, if Epirus DLC is active, prove legitimacy may acquire Pyrrhus's bloodline. Very nice. Uh, as for free features, we've got cultural integration, which we've learned about already. Um, added cultural integration feature, allowing you to move, grant or remove citizenship. We added the culture UI, added cultural decisions feature, um, added historically integrated cultures for the Seleucids, Antigonids, Egypt, Thrace, Macedon, Bacotria, Maoria, Cappadocia, Parthia, and Syracuse. Um, we've now got noble pops. Uh, we, they generate research and trade routes and have high political weight. 
Pops uh, have some political weight. This simulates uh, the influence of pops when generating unrest. Low numbers of nobles with high weight will generate more unrest than large numbers of slaves with a low political weight. Uh, there's a massive rebellion rework. Provinces can now rebel separately when their province loyalty reaches zero. Neighboring provinces will join in a rebellion if their loyalty reaches zero while a revolt is ongoing. Uh, there's a rebellion rework. Again, this is just part of the same thing. Uh, provinces that rebel would declare their rebellion war using a new offensive war goal that sets their own capital as the target. Um, the subjects. Rebellion rework subjects. You know what, I, I have a feeling that this is perhaps what we see here. Some some words are missing. Uh, is that is that from here? Nope, just, just straight up subjects. Nice. <laughs> Whatever. Um, let's go back to this one again then. Characters now exercise their influence by controlling votes, which is awesome. Uh, you know, republics seem to be a lot more fun to play. I'm looking forward to giving it a try. Nations now have three main Senate factions as opposed to five. Three unique factions are added for Rome as well as a set for other republics. Hopefully we'll end up seeing a Carthage unique set as well at some point. Senate approval now applies to most actions you may wish to take. Keeping the Senate happy will reward you with more absolute power, but displeasing them will cause your rule to be ineffectual. Um, approval is now global statistic, not balanced for each individual action, which is nice. Again, a lot of these things we've already done videos on the Dev Diary. It's been out for a while. So if you want to get a big look at like all the individual parts, then go through the, the playlist of Imperator Rome uh, Dev Diary videos that I've done because uh, they'll, they'll all be in there somewhere. Um, faction issues feature added. Fulfilling a faction's agenda will please them. However, if they're elected, they may attempt to push their agenda without your consent. Uh, trade goods now have a tr root price. Depending on the goods type, it's modified by whether a trade route is domestic, import, or export, and will generate commerce income for both parties. Uh, citizens and nobles now generate trade routes for the provinces in which they reside. Very nice. I love this. I love this. The more the more citizens and nobles you have, the more trade is going to go in there because they're the ones that control export and import. I love it. I think it's a much, much better system. Uh, trade goods have been entirely rebalanced, reducing modifier quantity to a more manageable level, as well as now focusing on pop type modifiers. We've added a seek spouse character interaction. Uh, cross door multiplayer enabled for all blah, blah, blah. Yep, everyone can play together. Cool. Tutorial advice system. An advice system is in integrated into the game intended for new players. This will be present in all new games, not only tutorial mode. It can be disabled in options. Oh, that's interesting. That's not something I've, uh, I've heard before. So I, that's cool. That's cool, I guess. Uh, there's a new faction impact to character interactions. Increased disloyalty modifier of pretenders in succession crises from negative 10 to negative 25. Increase the threshold for removing popular successor character from modifier from plus 33 to plus 40 loyalty. Influence character interaction now correctly requires the target to have at least 50 prominence. Interesting. I did not know that that was a requirement, or uh, I guess a, uh, a failed requirement. That's very interesting. So you can't just influence the best character, um, you know, stats-wise to get the most amount of political influence. You have to target someone who has prominence. Interesting. Plotting quietly, loyal, loyalty modifier is now correctly removed if the scheme is aborted. Uh, in order to attend, a triumph, a commander will leave his army if one is held for them. That's cool. That's interesting. That makes sense. Triumph now requires that character has at least 20 loyalty. That's also very interesting. I would say that maybe the army needs to be in your capital to have a triumph held for it, because the triumph is not just for the commander, it's for the entire army, right? Maybe, I don't know. Adoptions are now restricted to primary state culture characters unless the cultural decision or ease restrictions on citizenship has been enacted. Uh, for the economy, slaves' happiness no longer affects their output. That's glorious. Slave output uh, reduced marginally to account for the above. Slave default happiness drastically reduced, uh, and their political weight has been reduced. Flat commerce income removed from all pop types. Uh, revolts of Maurya, Seleucids, and Antigonids will no longer be given generic empire names. Nice, we're getting some um, interesting ones. Although, uh, I'm pretty sure Maurya does have a, a specific empire name. I've forgotten the name of it. Uh, Barata Varsha kind of rings a bell, but probably not. Uh, new apotheosis effect for converting pops to nobles. All right. Um, country flags on units instead of just their colors. Interesting. I like that. Um, all characters that arrive in your country due to you annexing their homeland will now have a loyalty penalty for five years. That makes sense. Yeah, for sure. 
Country ranks, regional power, major power, and great power now give negative 5, negative 10, and negative 15% war score reduction, respectively. I like that a lot as well. That's really cool. Forming Persia is now possible for Anatolian Caucasian culture countries, but requires that Persian culture is integrated. All right. Important foreign families that are taken after annexation will now try to bring females as well. That's that's nice. That's a that's a yeah. Bring your wife. You got to bring your wife and, and bring your kids. Um, bring your husbands too, because they're uh, integrating everyone out here. Reduced assimilation for all pop types. Uh, that's going to make a lot of people very happy, and an equal amount of people very unhappy. So, <laughs> good job. Um, Rome now have a unique invention that removes some of the requirements to intervene in wars. Interesting, certainly. Gonna have to have a look at that. The invention career negotiators now give war score cost reduction. What the fuck is an integration career negotiator? I, I, that might be a job type, but I, I don't remember seeing that at all, ever. Invention diplomatic... Oh, it's, a, it's an invention called Korean Negotiators. Right. I don't know what that does right now. Um, cool. Okay, fair enough. Invention diplomatic immunity now gives increased subject opinions. All right. That gives war, co war score cost reduction. Okay. Uh, diplomatic relations from that one, two diplomatic reputations that have plus one for open negotiations, CB now gives war score cost reduction, defied rulers giving free investments and now never give more than one, okay, shame, but okay, triumphs now give more substantial loyalty boost for 20 years and their price is 30 political influence, character being given a triumph will either gain victorious or conquer traits if they do not have the status trait already, which will increase their senate influence, very nice. New culture map mode functionality, cultures can be selected individually, um, and you can also see uh, when when this, you know, if you select an individual culture and they are the minority, it will still color it in on the map so you can see where your minorities are. And it's going to be interesting seeing the Jewish diaspora uh, with this map mode because I know that a lot of countries start with some Jewish pops in their capital, uh, even if they're not, you know, in Israel, in, in you know, the Levant area. So that's going to be interesting to see whereabouts the Jews have spread out to before the start of the game. Added province selection secondary mode for culture and religion map modes. Very nice. Uh, as for the AI, fixed a huge AI budget reservation for diplomacy and removed it. And army and navy construction maximums from hard coded and put it into script. Cool, so modders can fuck around with it now. AI now decides where to build forts partially decided on the economic value of its states. All right, um, you're still going to see small states building them quite frequently and big states having vast open swaths of land that are not fortified, I assume. AI armies will now prefer to deep strike less. We're playing Warhammer. Deep strike. Uh, go into the center of an enemy country, I assume. But yeah, interesting choice of words. Uh, AI calculation for target number of generals and admirals has been made independent, helping nations with lots of fleets like Carthage. AI invasions should be a bit more conservative, selecting armies that could walk to the goal. AI is a bit better at gathering its armies together into fewer stacks to match leader count. Uh, that's good. That's going to make it so that we're going to have less annoying, you know, little one stack spam dudes doing everything. You know, have the big battles that people have been asking for. AI may now use its navies to blockade enemy fleets and ports. It doesn't have anything better to do and thinks it's safe. Interesting. Interesting. AI will now achieve donkey. Uh, I guess that's to do with uh, supply units. Fair enough. Didn't know they had a problem with that. Fix the AI declaring war with non-adjacent claims somewhere far away when they could get much closer claim by fabricating. I've seen that happen, especially in Seleucids when they um, take some land, say in, in Armenia, then they split off into many different factions of, of rebelling areas. They sort of stabilize and they have like a couple of uh, provinces north of Armenia, then there's an Armenia, and then there's most of the Seleucids. They'll they'll declare for war goals adjacent to their northern territory, which is kind of stupid, because they can't get there. Um, uh, fixed big AI countries like Maori and Seleucids, scheduling lots of naval invasions on land. Alright, interesting. Uh, made sure big AI countries are more keen to fight each other. I like that, that's going to make things interesting. Uh, added culture UI to track AI cultures in a nation. Senate UI updated with new changes. Senate approval now tracked on top bar for republics. Um, added a backup solution if Paris decides to stay at home in the pre-order event chain. Handful of flavor events for specific deities. Minor events on completion of provincial investments. I like that. That's good. Let me know when they're finished. Good, 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 good. I like it. 
Added new barbarians for the new culture groups that were split from Golic. Nice. Added new Scythian cultures, Sakan, uh, Thizigetian, Legian, and Agathisirian. All right. Uh, added new Adrissian culture for Adrissia as well as parts of Thrace. I like that a lot. Renamed Kelto Pannonian and split into Scordiscian and Erovaskian. Uh, split the cult Gallic culture group into Gallic, Belge, and Pannonian. Split Belge culture into several smaller cultures. Split da uh, Dacian culture. Added Atavi um, in northeastern India. Dardic in west northwestern Aryan areas. Added a port to Naupactus in Aetolia. Uh, let me just remind myself where now Pactus is, because I do sort of recall that being an issue. Is that where Pas uh, Pasai? Not Pasai. I don't know. The game's open in a second, so I'll be able to find it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I don't have a save game. There. Yes. That is exactly, and it's Patrai that I was thinking of. Having a port here, super important, because if you're in the north here, look where your ports are. You got one in Lucas, uh, one in um, Casope, uh, but then nothing until you get to Corinthus. It's super, super important to have one in Naupactus. I would have also accepted uh, Caledon, uh, as long as it would be in this sea tile. But yeah, having one here, super, super good. I like that a lot. Um, Blemian culture is now part of the Marotic group. Changed culture of Elis to Aetolian. All right, interesting. Messenia now starts in the Manitaean Defensive League, uh, so Sparta's been massively nerfed then. Um, moved Rosmer to Holy Site from Canatio in Britain to Scarpona in Gaul. Alright. Uh, Nelotic Culture Group to Egyptian, Garamantic into the Numidian Culture Group, Split Aryan into two culture groups. You now got Prakian and uh, Magadi, I assume. Split Egyptian Culture Group into Baharic, Sahidic, and Fayumic. Changed Pythia Minid's culture to Thessalian. Ambrachia now starts as an OPM tag in Epirus. Ah, okay. So that is going to be an OPM. I mean, Epirus is already an OPM, because it's only in one province. What he means is a, like a one city miner or a one uh, territory miner or whatever the smallest breakdown is. One, one miner. Uh, he's a miner. He's a minor, small miner. Um... Right, uh, forced Diadochi war events for Thrace, awesome. Added events to introduce Jewish minority characters in some cases. Tribal tattoos to some Egyptians out in the desert, very cool. They're now considered tribes rather than citizens. Historically integrated cultures for Seleucids, we've seen this one already. Some characters to Dardania and Paeonia. Tooltips to some forced Diadochi war events for clarity. Diadochi ultimatum events will now only release tributary subjects, alright. Generic conquest missions are now disabled when a country has uh, specific content for that region. Ah, I like that. That's good. Uh, if Cappadocia accepts Ariathes back on the throne, this will now make them independent of Phrygia. Phrygia will be able to get to war with Cappadocia to stop this if they are at peace when it happens. Making Carthage a tributary as Rome will no longer transfer their subjects to Rome. Damn it. That's a shame. Uh, opened up road building in subject land. Fuck yes. Oh, that is so good. That is so, so good. Thank you. Uh, that's that's really nice that I can now build roads in my subject's land. That's awesome. I won't have to integrate them to build a proper road network now. Roman Colonia now take two years to become cities, if not already. That's that's nice. I like that. Um, that's not something we'd seen before. Uh, Seleucids now gain temporary siege assault modifier for abandoning the Indus. Cool. Uh, simplified tooltips of Seleuci and Marian starting event. Armenian events relating to Cappadocian pretender now has a chance to fire any year rather than always after three years. Diadochi war between Macedon and Antigonids will now include Antigonid subjects. Good. That won't be so easy for Macedon. The Epigoni event, that's the Diadochi's children, will no longer fire for successor kingdoms who manage to reunify the Archaead Empire before their second ruler's death. Alrighty. I mean, their second ruler is still an Epigoni, though. Unless it's Phrygia. I guess this is um, something like if you manage to unify the Argead Empire before the death of 
you know, your your starting ruler, or in Phrygia's case, uh, before the death of Demetrius, because he still gets the big old claim block that you get for being a, a Diadochi. Um, I would assume that after Demetrius died, all the claims would go away, uh, even though he'd unified the Archaead Empire and still had the claims from that. So that's cool. That's good. It's just basically a bug fix. Uh, added on rain, ending on action, filling the same purpose as that one, uh, which will which will we'll do that, and that's cool. Yep, scripting stuff. I'm sure modders will like this, probably, maybe, I don't know. Improved daily and monthly tick performance compared to version 1.4, good. Fixed AI, setting goals of arms affecting other nations, joining you in war instead of the other way around. Fixed become great warrior, finished one tooltip, fixed civil war resolution, fixed a crash. Fixed cultures, fixed destroyed subunits, not reinforcing in combat. Ah, that's going to fix the naval bug. That's good. Uh, fixed isolated provinces being calculated properly now. It wasn't working in some edge cases. All right, good. Fixed isolated provinces being calculated properly now. It wasn't. Fixed the issue where recruited ex-mercenary rulers would not be able to befriend other characters using the make friend character interaction. Made Aleodai, Philidae, and Aikidae names consistent with other Greek family names. Alright. Revolts, now copy military traditions alongside with tech. Alliance, now properly removes guarantees. Um, more stuff being fixed. Fixed food shortage caused by units to flip-flop monthly tick. Alright. Fixed governor troops sacking the wrong city. Fixed randomly generated rulers having duplicate entry in the one hour rulers ledger. Didn't even notice that one. Um, I mean, that's, is this not the same? Alright, cool. Uh, claims with updating, conquering, releasing the nations, selling provinces. Uh, alright, revolts and lowering entire governorships. That's a, sh yeah, maybe, nah, that's fine. That's fine. Mercs now get full food when hired. That's, that's huge. That's awesome that that's added. Hell yes. I mean, I don't like the Merc system, and you can see my video for how I would fix mercenaries, um, if you like, but, um, Having if we're going to stick with the system, then uh, that's good. Stop rooting out pirates from deleted land mercs. Tech progression now overflows instead of being reset to zero. Uh, Jewel Army is no longer free. Good, that's a good fix there. Adult checks to candidates chosen rising from obscurity. Bypass for Sicilian champion mission if no Sicilian countries exist in Sicily. Uh, test create conditions clear. Yeah, good. Pink for earlier losing land in the fourth Diadochi deal with Thrace. Change pop setup so no problems with start over pop capacity. That's nice. Um, minor character leaves the world. Uh, references to Phrygia. Good, because now they're called the Antigonid Kingdom, remember? Um, moved. Alright, I think this is just a bunch of all uh, bug fixes, and I mean. I don't see anything massively, you know, interesting there, like something I'm just focusing on. Um, I think the, the big the big ones that I really wanted fixed, read them already. Um, the fix to, you know, drill being free and uh, the naval fix is really good. So yeah, that's that's great. That's all great. That's all fantastic news that all of this is now fixed. The uh, the full patch notes are there, and uh, let me just hit refresh here, see if there's anything new here. AI yeah, will now achieve donkey. Donkey is the explanation of that. I like that. That's a good explanation. Thank you, Ario. Also, what has he named this thread? Okay, there's no date. He has not, he's not screwed up the date this time. Uh, so, fantastic. Good job, Ario. You're learning. The date is, is sacred. It should be in the British format. <laughs> anyway, that is the dev diary. That's the release, the patch notes. That's all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, you will be able to play the Menander update starting from tomorrow, though I'm not sure exactly what time tomorrow. Usually it will be around about three o'clock Swedish time. Uh, but having said that, um, that's when they can press a button inside Paradox headquarters. I don't know what it's going to be like with this COVID situation, so don't quote me on that time. Sometime tomorrow, it's going to be released, and you're going to get to play it, and hopefully there's going to be some, you know, interesting new mechanics for you to try out. So, I'm going to put a cut in here. I'm going to go and enjoy the rest of my day and get ready to uh, cram in some Imperator Rome gameplay tomorrow. It's going to be good. 
Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, feel free to click the like button. Let me know your thoughts in the, sub, uh, the, the, the box in the bottom where the comments go. If you want to see more Imperator Rome stuff, then subscribe if you haven't. Um, what, what else do YouTubers say? I've got a Patreon if you want to support me there as well. That's cool. It's in the description. It's a bunch of stuff in the description. You should probably go check it out. I'm rambling. I'm going to put a cut in here. Thanks all for watching. Bye-bye.